The John McLeod Annual Lecture is a chance for scientists, researchers, or those in academia to raise really topical issues that face the horticulture and gardening world. And this year, Dr. Ross Cameron from the University of Sheffield is raising the issue of urban horticulture, repairing the rift. And Ross, it's quite a title. Uh, so what's the rift that needs repairing? I think the rift is a rift in the fabric between us and the rest of nature. Uh, so this discontinue, this lack of unity we seem to have in our modern world with, with the natural world and the fact that we are probably causing it more problems than being in harmony with it these days. And, and so this is the concept that we are a species that derives from nature that needs to be in woodlands and green areas and not urban environments. Well, we are now living in, in urban environments more, more and more so. So, you know, about 70% of Europeans now live in a town or a city. Um, and that's very different from the last 2,000 years where we've been in agricultural environments and we've seen the, the nature around us. But what does the individual do about it? Is there an individual responsibility, are you suggesting, on people or not? Well, I think that's, that's really why the discussion is around horticulture and gardening, because um, there is some evidence to suggest that these spaces don't need to be the Rockies, they don't need to be the wilderness, they can be at your back door. Absolutely, and, and, and I can assume that things like the RHS Green and Great Britain campaign yeah. and a lot of these activities which are trying to get people connected to nature is really important. Yeah, yeah, people can make a real difference, both, both from a small scale for, for the, the wildlife, it just needs a few plants for, for the, the basic insects to come in that the birds can feed off. So the physical activity helps, helps you relax, there's implications to mental health, so you're more likely to be in a more um, relaxed state. In 2015, the RHS launched its Health, Happiness and Horticulture campaign, which is encouraging people to get outside, get gardening and get fitter and, and enjoy it. Do you think these are the sort of approaches that we need to be looking at? Green space is really important um, from, from a physical, environmental perspective, as well as having some health benefits to us. You've used in the past the term careful gardening. Can you just explain that a bit more? The key point to make, make really at the start off is that gardening should be fun. It's about realising that what, what we do has implications for, for the wildlife that might come into that garden. So you're not wanting to be the taste police, you're not wanting to be draconian about how people's gardens should look? Consideration got for, for, for I think people who are already keen gardeners. I think the other audience who we don't really talk about enough is the fact that there's probably lots of people who don't garden yet. Mm. The benefits seem to be so, so positive that we should be encouraging these people. Over the last few years, lots of people have been encouraged to maybe plant a hanger basket or a window box. Are you suggesting that actually all these small little changes do have a, an additional benefit? We need to get the balance between the green and the green in our cities. We want more green infrastructure. But there's research recently that suggests that the types of plants that we put in, some are better than others at providing certain benefits, certain services. So if you're wanting to cool the city, for example, yeah. some tr street trees might reduce surface temperatures by 10 degrees, other ones might only do it by 2 degrees. That's a massive opportunity for horticulture. That's right, and we're, we're really just at the edge of understanding the, the different values that different plants have. So does that mean that at some stage in the future you could imagine planners or whoever's responsible for creating a space in an urban environment to be taking their influence from a natural environment. Yes, and ornamental plants is, is, is really important in this context because we need to make these places attractive to people to be valued as well. But there may also be other services that are providing more subtle ones about water quality or air reductions or whatever it might be. But this is really exciting. This is potentially putting horticulture on a different level, maybe the same with architecture or planning or landscape architecture. Do you really see that we could be in that situation soon? We should be ar arguing that horticulture is very much a green engineering. It's about getting a matrix together that provides a range of services. Basically, we should be using green infrastructure not as a superficial looks nice, but actually green infrastructure because it's essential to a range of our health and well-being and social uh, issues that we have at the minute. What a strong message that is. Many thanks, Ross. Thank you.